Welcome to uh, one of the last editions of our morning show, the Scooter Estates Morning Show. I'm your host, Mark Prevo, and I am here in the home of Louise Morgan. And she is a consummate knitter. She's always knitting. You should see all the stuff she knits and everything she does. Uh, we've known Louise for a long time. She lives here at Schooner States, and we just love her. One of our favorite tenants. Really? Yes, absolutely. You never told me that before. <laughs> oh, sh I told you not to say stuff like oh. that. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, Louise, uh, we came right to her home to do this. Louise, tell me where you were born. I was born in Holton, Maine. The county? Yeah, yeah. Well, that's where I lived. And uh, my dad had a potato farm in Sherman Mills, is where our home was. Yeah. <clears throat> but Holton was the nearest hospital, so that's where my mom, where all three of us children were born. Right. And then I grew up in Sherman Mills on a potato farm. Boy, I'll tell you, uh, I, I love the county, and we took a trip up there with the tenants. Uh, probably three, four years ago now, and it was one of the best trips we ever had. Really? Love the county. Yeah. Just love it. And what time of year did you drive by all the potato fields? We They were all in bloom. Oh. With colors. Isn't it beautiful? It was stunning. Purple it was and stunning. and white and yellow and yes. pink. Yes. Yeah. I never knew that. I So the different colors, uh, the different kinds uh, the of potatoes. The different kinds, yep. Amazing. Yeah. And who knew that potatoes blossom like that? I didn't know that. Really? I, I, I think Holton is missing out, or the county is missing out on a big marketing effort to get tourism up there during that time of year. Well, that could be. And there are a few places for tourists to stay, but they don't... That's not something that they... Um, fight to build up bigger every year. Right, you know? right. Exactly. Well, they're so busy year-round. Oh, Because yeah. you plant the potatoes in the spring, and then you take care of them just like you would a garden. Yeah. And then you harvest them in the fall, and you've got to have a place to put them until you can sell them. Exactly. That's why they have these big potato houses up there. And those potato houses are heated, because if not, the potatoes would freeze. Exactly. Yeah. And there, I notice a lot of them are a little bit underground and then yes. a little bit on top, but they yeah. do have to heat them. I, yeah. And they've got lights, I think, that show if something goes wrong with yes. the heating. Yes, they do. I've well, seen they that. do now. Yeah. But back when I was a kid, my father used to have to stay at the potato house, his share of nights, yeah. during the winter to keep the stove going because it was just a wood stove then. Isn't that something? Yeah. I'm telling and you. And every farmer that stored their potatoes there until they got sold had to work there a certain time to guard everybody else's potatoes. Isn't that fantastic? Yeah, and keep the fire going. You know, uh, Maine's slogan is life the way it should be, or Maine, life the way it, it should be. Yeah. And I think that is for the county. That slogan oh, really for the county. is for the exactly. county. Exactly. You know, the way life should be. Maine, yeah. the way life should be. Yeah. And it's... It's going back in time and, and those values that are taught, even to this day in the county, yeah. of a good work ethic, caring for your Absolutely. neighbors, helping one another. I mean, it's one of the only places where you can still pump gas and pay for it after you pump it. Because mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> everywhere you have to pay before you pump. Yeah, right. Uh, and I know it was when they invented the school bus, I remember... Going to school on, uh, well, it was uh, just a big old station wagon is all it was. And they added a bulk to it and put another set of tires on it. And, oh, my God. That's what we rode to school till they invented the big yellow school buses. And, my God, they were heated. Can you believe <laughs> Boy, oh boy, so you go back a ways. Oh, I go, go back, back a ways. Yeah, and, yeah. And I, I, I don't know, but my dad had a potato farm, and it was like this. You you left the house, and you went up a little level like that, only it was further away. But right. it was, and we had a big garden. And then you went up another level, and there was uh, our 20 acres of potatoes, and you could... Then there was a row of trees that went this way, which yeah. divided this farm from this farm. But you just go past that tree, and there's another 20 acres of potatoes over there. 20 it, acres of potatoes. And the next farm, 20 acres. And the next farm, 30, 40. Yeah. Some of them grew 100 acres of potatoes. Wow. Fields you can't even see from one end of them to the other. 
It, so, it's beautiful when they're in bloom. Oh, gee, it really is. It's it really pink is. Pink blossoms, white blossoms, yellow blossoms, and what's the other? A light purple, I guess. And we would suggest anybody go up there during that time of year, which is probably um, June, Ju yeah. well, June or July. Well, they're planting then. Um, a little earlier in the spring. August? Yeah. About yeah. August or yeah. so there. Yeah. yeah. So, so after, you, so you went to school up there. Yeah. And then tell me how you got this way. How did you end up coming further south? Okay. Well, uh, my husband worked in a small grocery store in the town where we lived. Okay. And um, he pretty much managed it because the guy that owned it, uh, he was, he was elderly. He wanted to retire. He wanted to sell it. He wanted my husband to buy it. He didn't want it because it was a little tiny store. And so the guy just closed the store. So my, uh, we were not married at the time. We were dating, but he went to Bangor because it was an ad in the paper. It was exactly a hundred miles away. We lived up in Sherman Mills. That's just south of Holton a little ways. Right. And he went down to Bangor and filled out an application at a brand new grocery store that had just been built down there. What the heck was the name of the place? Can't even remember. But anyway, he's worked in so many of them. But anyway, they called him the next day and said, the guy, this is exactly what I said, get your ass down here just as fast as you can. I don't know if you, we can say that on Schooner TV 1390. Well, then... It's all right. It's okay. I'm retiring. <laughs> what, are they going to fire me? <laughs> but anyway, that's what they said to him. Yeah. So he went, and he came back, and he was all smiles and said, I got the job. I got to be there Monday morning. He said, and you're coming with me. Wow. And, and so away we went. We had a little apartment, and that's where we lived. And he worked in that store uh, for, oh, my God, Three years, maybe, he worked in that store, and then he wanted to go to a bigger store, a bigger supermarket that they had just built in the city of Bangor. Yeah. We lived in Hamden, but they, anyway, and he worked there for a while, and then he said, I want my own store. Right. And there was a store for sale, and he bought a store. And in Green. Yes. Green, Maine. Green, That's Maine. how you ended, right across the river yep. in Green, Maine. In Green, Maine. And you own that, that little store, which is now Gowles, but it used That's to be. That's right. Yeah. Yep. Still there. That's Still fantastic. Going. And I think and, they've added to it. It's, yeah. It's got to be bigger now because yeah. we added to it when we had it. He put a whole back end. It was added on to the store, but it was used for storage so yeah. that you could go out and get a case of string beans or whatever you wanted right to, to put on the shelf yeah and so he had a storage place for him and it was all he did and everything yeah um the um you know the people that come in didn't go out there but that's where their supplies right were right you gotta have storage if you're gonna yes. be selling products yeah and, and so tell me you had a big family yeah. How many how many children did you end we up having? We had seven. Seven children. Yeah. Now, and was that because you needed a workforce in the grocery store? Well, I don't know. They all worked. So I guess. But he did when they were, when they turned 13. And if they wanted to, he didn't make them. But if they wanted to, he took them over to the store. And he said, this is what the, the jobs are here. Stock in the shelves. But you have to keep track. When you open a case of something, you have to make a note of it. And you have to keep track of how many you put on the shelf. Then the rest of it goes in the storage room. And you have to know where it goes. So he taught them all that. Well, of course, all they wanted to do was handle the cash. up front. Yes. all they wanted to do. <laughs> so the girls were all cashiers. And the boys were bundle boys and uh, stocked the shelves and... By God, they put themselves through college by doing that. Because he paid them good. He oh, paid sure. them just like you would anybody else. Boy, that's great. Yeah. That's great. They didn't like it. Uh, I mean, they didn't want it. They liked it because it was a job. Right. And he would love to have had one of them take it over. But they did not want it. Right. One of the girls was sitting there one day. And he said, what is the matter, honey? He said, She said, Daddy, I can't help it. But I don't want that damn store. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work. Yeah, I mean, it, it had to be a lot of work. Your work. husband must have put in 
80 hours a week, 60 well, hours a week. He, I mean, he it's, was there seven days. Yeah, yeah seven he, days a week. Yeah, he sat in the office seven days. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And he did everything from bundle groceries to stock shelves. To sure. Carry, carry him out. He did everything. Yeah. And everybody in town loved him. And he was so good to everybody. You right, know? right. Somebody would come in and he'd call the... the Phone at the front at the front desk, not yeah. the upstairs desk. Yeah, and he'd say, "Just throw a couple of extra cans of juice in for the kids. Give them an extra loaf of bread. Tell them you got too many. Or something. I don't care what you tell them. Just give it to them." Wow! And they would wow. come right back the next week, and just they were so thankful. They'd be so smiling. So when he'd say, "Yeah, I got some more for you this week. This is this bread's three days old. I can't put it on the shelf." Well, that was a fact. You can't do yeah. that. Yeah. And uh, they said, "Well, we'd like it," and uh, and. He, he, the man said, we just bought a toaster. The kids are going to wear it out in a week, I know, he said. <laughs> Boy, but what it was a new good, to them, you know. Yeah, what a good husband, yeah. what a good oh, man. Oh, God, he, he yeah. was a good guy. Everybody loved him. Yeah. Everybody loved him. He was so, he was he was generous, he was patient. I don't know how the hell he put up with me, but anyway, <laughs> anyway he did, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> did did you guys get to vacation at all? Did you get to go anywhere or just uh, do something well, fun? Well, uh, once in a while we took a trip up to the county because that's where my parents were. And I had a sister that was married and lived up there. But I had a, my brother was in the service. And every time he came home, we tried to take a trip up. Sure. So, so I could see him. I just wanted to see him. I love my brother. Right. So we did. We went at least once a year. And his folks, um, his dad was a superintendent on road construction, so he only worked in the summertime. Right. But he made good money. Yeah, yeah. And so when they had a break, sometimes they'd come down and stay overnight with us because we built a house in Hamden, Maine. He worked in Bangor in yeah. the big supermarket. Yeah. But we, and Hamden is just south of Bangor. Oh, God, so it's, yes. Yeah. It, it was, yeah, it's you know, nice. It was a... Easy commute, 10 yeah, minutes yes, up there, 15 was. minutes. Yes, yeah. that's all it was. Yeah. But I wanted a house out in the country, and we built this house <clears throat> in Hamden, and I designed my own house, and everybody made fun of me, but I don't care. My house was... That's the way I wanted it, and that's yeah. the way I had it built. Yeah. And... Uh, Everybody in the neighborhood, well, of course, I was so damn lucky because I was the only mom, a mother of seven, of course, that didn't have to work. Everybody that had two kids worked and hired somebody to take care of the kids. I didn't want to do that. Well, how could you how could work I? with seven kids? You would have never been able to afford it, how to hire anybody. Well, and there was nobody there to... Uh, um, you do want... the laundry and do the cooking, and that's right. all I did all day was laundry and dishes and cooking. And, and you I, wanted to bring up your own children. I wanted to do it myself. Good for you. I Good wanted to do you. it myself. Yeah. yeah. My mother-in-law would come. God rest her soul. Oh, <laughs> jeez. Well, but she'd come with a bag of candy, and she'd come with a big bag of cookies. Look what Grammy brought. And she'd dump them right out off the table. Here, have oh, some. Oh, boy. Oh, drive and, me nuts. And the kids were full of sugar and wound right up <sighs> tight, and you had to deal with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one day of that, and then I said, no more. The cookies go in the cupboard, and they will stay there until mealtime. If they want one, they can have it, and that's it. Oh, Good for boy. you. Good for oh, you. Oh, I, yeah. no, I made some rules. I had to win. And I know your kids absolutely think the world of you because I know they call you all the time. Yeah, they, they come do. visit all of them. Yeah. Even during our COVID lockdown, so to speak, they were at your window. They, are at my they window. were visiting when we could visit outdoors, when we could visit indoors, <laughs> yeah. when they was at the window. They were always here and they still visit yeah. with you all the well, time. I have one daughter that lives only three miles from here and she's the one that she was my. Well, she wasn't my smart one, but she was the one. Uh oh. Encouraging I hope she doesn't hear this. <laughs> She had courage enough to get out and say, this is what I want to do, Daddy. I want to work outdoors. Because he was trying to get her to yeah. work in the office at the store or run right. the cash register. No, right. Daddy, I want to work outdoors. Yeah. And finally he said, well, if I was you, I would hop in my little car. And I would go see your grandfather and see what he's... Well, his dad was a superintendent on road construction. She came home. On, I swear to God, she, she was a foot taller and a smile... 
Grandpa gave me a job. And I said, good, what are you going to be doing? I don't know, but Grandpa gave me a job. As long as I'm working outdoors, I don't care. The way she went. Today, she makes more money than all the other kids put together because she is a superintendent on road construction. Wow. She builds roads and bridges all over. She, she's in her car. Well, she yeah. just retired. But yeah. she was in her car every day driving from this job to that job to that job to make sure and they had... Supervising and yeah. make sure they had what they needed make, to get the work done. Yeah, make sure everybody was following. Fantastic. Them. Yeah. Fantastic. And she loved it. And everywhere she went to work, they loved her. And I was in her... The Big Shot's office one day, because she was waiting for a chance to go in, when this guy comes stomping in, and he said, uh, well, what the hell's going on here? And, and she said, well, can I help you, sir? I do work here. And he said, I want to see the boss. And she said, well, I am the superintendent on this job, and I am the one that hires people and uh, decides what they can do. And he looked at her and he said, you, you're a goddamn woman, he said. Well, about that time, the owner of the company came through the door. I scared the living shit right out of me. And he grabbed him, right, right, just like this, he grabbed him, he said, you come with me. And he drug him out the door and he slammed him against the door. And he talked to him for about 10 minutes out there and then he, they took him somewhere. And I said to her, oh, my God, he's going to come back and kill you. And she said, ah, he's just one of a bunch of <laughs> nags. She said, I'm not the least bit worried. Well, I was scared to death for about a month, but I, I, don't, oh. know, I don't know where he went or what happened to him. But it didn't bother her a bit. I mean, uh, there she is. She's just, she's, she's rugged. She's strong. She loves what she does and everybody that works for her. I was in her office one day, and this guy, <laughs> I probably told you. He said, she said, can I help you, sir? And he said, I'm looking for a job. And she said, well, I am the superintendent on this job. And he looked at her and he slammed his fist down. He said, let me tell you something, honey. I ain't working for no goddamn woman. Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Louise Morgan, Why ladies and gentlemen. Why did I have to be there? Just, oh, no. I, I, Louise is one of these folks that has a thousand of these stories. She is wonderful. Please come and meet her. She's in apartment 116. Just a wonderful lady, and she's got <laughs> wonderful stories about all her children and herself, and, and she's just a great person. And so, we all survived. And we all survived, okay. exactly. <laughs> so that's going to do it for this edition of the Schooner Morning Show. We hope everybody has a wonderful day today. It is gorgeous outside. Get out and enjoy the day. Louise, thank you for taking the time to meet with us this Oh, anytime. And anytime. watch Channel 1390 at 10 o'clock for the interview with Louise Morgan. Thank you, and have a great day, everyone.